A frustration the last couple of years has been seeing online mountain bike media repeatedly reviewing bikes from Giant with Fox Live Valve. Last year, it was the Trans X, Giant's new for 2021 29er with 135 rear travel, 150mm fork. After watching the tests on that, the only thing most people would remember is the reviewer's dissatisfaction with the Fox Live Valve. They missed the point that the Trans X was a phenomenal bike. This year, the first review that came out on the new 2022 Trans 29 once again was a model with Fox Live Valve, and once again we have no idea what the bike attached to the electronic suspension stuff is all about. Today, we're going to look at the brand new 2022 Giant Trans 29 II. This is an alloy bike, not a carbon bike, and has suspension that does not require electric wires to operate. This is the cheapest of all the Trans 29s, a bike that I think is a category killer. Watch this review if you want to understand why I am so impressed. Specifications, geometry, small details, suspension, these are all impressive talking points and I'm going to go through them. By the time we finish, you'll know what impressed me, the bike's weight, what I would upgrade, how it compares to similar bikes from Trek and Specialized, and what kind of rider this bike suits. So stick with me. Details. All Trans 29ers share the same geometry and 120mm rear, 130mm front suspension. There are two alloy versions, in Canada at least, with the Trans 229, the one we're looking at, being the least expensive at $33.99 Canadian. I haven't been able to find US pricing. If you go perusing the Giant website, keep in mind there is a Trans 29, what we're looking at, the Trans X 29, which has more suspension, and the Trans X, which is the 27.5 wheeled version with more suspension again. And anytime you see the word advanced with a Giant bike model, that means it has a carbon frame. We're looking at the Alloy Trans 29 II. The drivetrain is a 1x12 Shimano Dior drivetrain with a 10 to 51 cassette the usual on any of the Shimano 12-speed drivetrains, and more than enough gear range for 95% of the riders out there, especially considering that it comes with a 30-tooth Praxis chainring. The cranks are Praxis Cadets, and they are 170mm in all sizes except for the small, which has 165mm cranks. This is a very progressive move, and one that shows Giant is paying attention to current trends and the science on crank length. One minor hesitation is with the Praxis WaveTech chain rings. Reports that the chain can bounce off easier than traditional narrow wide rings are out there, and we hear a little bit of feedback about this, though not tons considering how many bikes have this setup. The wheels have 30mm internal width rims, a big upgrade from the previous Trans 29, which helps get all the possible performance out of the 29 by 25 Maxxis tires, especially because the tires are set up tubeless in the shop. The aggressor rear and Minion DHF front are a great combo for aggressive riding, and the choice to run XO casings is appropriate for this category of bike. Frame protection is one of the details that stands out to me. At both the seat stays and down tube, the protection seems more sophisticated than previous versions. And while talking details, the new cable grommets where the cables go internal has been upgraded from the old soft rubber things that wanted to pop out too easily. There's also room in the frame to run a water bottle, and Giant now includes two extra bolts under the top tube for Enduro tool tube storage. The rocker link on the suspension is made of carbon and it includes a flip chip to adjust geometry to either suit slower techie riding in the steep position or fast and steep in the low position. Switching isn't something you'd do on the trail, but it is a quick five minute job with a couple Allen keys. Brakes on this first model we received were Tektro Orion four pistons. The published spec is for Shimano M420, an entry level Shimano four piston. These brakes work okay, but won't be awesome on longer, faster descents. If I purchase this bike, this is the first upgrade I would plan on, up to at least a proper Dior level brake with shorter levers and the ability to run better brake pads. Giant's cockpit is improved from previous Trans 29s, with more appropriate length of stems, either 40 or 50 millimeter reach depending on size, and 35 millimeter bar diameter. The bars are 780 millimeters wide and have nice neutral bend to them. Giant is even changing the length of the grips depending on size, which is a pretty amazing detail. I like the feel of these grips as I prefer a thinner grip, 
where this is a pretty personal preference, so you may or may not like the grips yourself. The dropper is a giant contact switch, which I'm a fan of. They're simple, they work, they aren't affected by cold, and they die after about three years, which is sadly a common trait of dropper posts these days. The lever isn't fancy, but works fine. Giant is specking better dropper lengths ranging from 125mm on size small up to 170mm on the large and extra large. The saddle is a Giant Romero, a saddle I like enough that I installed one on my own bike. Suspension. A standout on this bike is the suspension, which is similar to what is seen on bikes in the $4,000 and up price range from many bike companies. The rear shock is a Fox DPS with a three position lever for open trail and firm settings. I personally don't ever use those different lever settings on the Fox shocks and spend all my time in the open plush setting. What matters most to me about the Fox suspension is how easily the stroke initiates and how smooth the stroke is, especially compared to the Suntour and X-Fusion shocks common on other bikes at this price. Rear suspension can't be talked about without mentioning the Maestro suspension design, Giant's patented short dual link design that is known for efficient pedaling and great overall performance. Maestro linkage is durable and seems to result in some of the longest lasting bearings of any suspension designs. The fork is a Marzocchi Z2, which for this price point is probably the best combination of stiff and smooth available. It is an air fork with 34mm stanchions, through axle, rebound adjustment, and a sweep adjuster which offers easy compression adjustment from open and plush to a virtually locked out feel. Comparables. There are two main comparable bikes I see from Specialized and Trek. From Specialized is the Stump Jumper Alloy. It's a 35.99 bike with 130-140mm travel, which is more expensive, lower spec on every major item, front and rear suspension, drivetrain, tubed smaller tires. The only equivalent part is the brakes, the one weakness on the Trance 29 too, ironically. From Trek is the Top Huel 5. Once again, it's a more expensive 120mm front and rear travel bike. The Trek has down-spec suspension, the same drivetrain, and even cheaper brakes. It does have down-tube storage, which is really cool, but I wouldn't trade away the Fox DPS on the Giant to get down-tube storage with an X-Fusion rear shock. The X-Fusion just will not feel that good. Geometry. Like every bike update that is happening, the Trance 29 gets the longer, slacker, lower, steeper treatment. In this case done in a very meaningful way, which I feel will be a big benefit, especially to technically strong riders. Having spent a few months on the previous version, all these changes are in line with what my wish list would have been. The old bike was great, this one is greater. Bike weight. As is, no pedals, size medium, this bike is 33 pounds. To put that in perspective, the $9,500 Pivot Trail 429 I recently reviewed was 29 pounds and has the same amount of suspension. Who is this bike for? At this level, it will be a very popular first full suspension trail bike. When used by this group, I think it will make an excellent trail bike. The short, efficient travel and steep seat tube will be appreciated on those long climbs. The short cranks will keep pedal strikes minimal when the climbs include some chunky sections and the Dior drivetrain should provide all the gears when things get steep, especially considering the 30-tooth front ring. Once the descent begins, the longer and slacker geometry and relative plushness of the suspension should inspire confidence on many trails, even getting into some single black rated trails. Just keep in mind the one place shorter travel bikes can reach their limits is when high speeds and looser chunky terrain are combined. There is no substitution for more travel and burlier tires in those conditions. The secondary user group for this bike would be the very skilled bike shop employee. Bike shop people are quick to identify bikes that are way more capable than what their intended uses are and love bikes like this that give a base to start an affordable custom bike project. I could see a bunch of these with Chromag bars, stem and saddle, XT4 piston brakes, a chain guide, and a rear double down tire to turn it into the ultimate short travel hucking trail bike. Who is this bike not for? It isn't a DH bike, it isn't a free ride bike, not an enduro bike, and not an XC race bike. So if competing in any of those disciplines is the planned use, don't get this bike. I think the biggest issue would be when an intermediate rider gets a bike like this, 
then falls in love with riding burlier trails because of the fun and confidence they've gotten from this bike. All of a sudden, this story turns into one where the rider is crashing a bunch because their skills aren't able to keep up with handling a bike like this on steep, chunky stuff and riding free ride features. So it isn't a case of the wrong bike, but the rider's ambitions outgrowing the bike. We hear the story often in the shop, and it usually results in the bike being sold and the rider making a switch to a more expensive, more enduro-oriented bike. The point in that case is that these shorter travel trail bikes help the rider get into riding at a lower price, help them fall in love with riding even more, and in many cases, help them justify the expense of a fancier, long travel bike. I hope this is helpful for your bike buying decisions. I'm Graham, the shop is Bike Bros. We sell Giant, Marin, Rocky Mountain, Pivot, and Esker. We're based in Cochrane, Alberta, Canada, and I hope we'll see you in the store someday. Happy trails.